Hello, and welcome to worship at Rio Rancho United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you have decided to join us, and we pray that you will find comfort, strength, peace, and hope in our message today. And we certainly look forward to a time when we will all be able to be together again face to face. Now, just a few announcements this morning, kind of the same as they have been, but staffing remains limited, but we are answering the phone and checking the messages and picking up our mail. So if you need to contact us, please be sure and do that by giving us a call or dropping us a letter. Also, if you need help in any way, if you need someone to go grocery shopping for you or you need a prescription picked up, or an errand run of any kind, there are people here at the church that would like to help. So just give us a call, and we will be sure and get back with you and get you the help that you need. Also, maybe you just need to talk to someone. You know, it's, uh, it's hard being in isolation. And if you haven't had someone to talk to and you need someone to talk to, there are people here that would love to sit and talk with you on the phone. So just give us a call, and we'll get back with you. Uh, the upper rooms have come in, and if you would like to have an upper room, we have them available. We can mail one to you, or someone can drop one off. If you would like an upper room, please let the church office know, and we will get you one. There may be some people out there that don't have the Internet. And if you know of someone that doesn't have the internet, um, but they might like the worship service or a bulletin or an upper room, please let us know that too, and we can get one to them. We can either mail it to them or someone can drop it off. We've asked everyone to pray at 4.52 every afternoon for our church, our family, our country, the first responders, uh, everybody kind of on the front lines, you know, all those uh, necessary people that are out there really helping. And so um, we hope that you've been doing that. If you haven't, we ask you to go ahead and join us each day at 452. And we chose that time because our address here at the church is 1652 Abrazo, and 1600 in military time is 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So we decided 452 was a unique time for us. So please join us in prayer. And lastly, remember to remain faithful with your tithes and your offerings. Um, you guys have been doing a great job with that, and we truly do appreciate it. You know, we still do have a lot of bills here at the church with the electricity and, and everything that's going on. So remaining faithful is really important, and it is what God is asking us to do, and we certainly appreciate the fact that you guys are doing a great job. And I think that's all the announcements for today. And I just hope that we get to see each other again real soon. Don't
Let us come together in prayer. Creator, we are gathered in your name. And while we are apart, we are still together as your children in spirit and purpose and of one accord. So hear our prayers. Hear our prayers for our nation, our world, our state, our community, our church, our families. We lift up those that have been hit very hard by this virus, those who are worried about jobs and finances, those who are feeling impatient at home. And we lift up those who are sick, those who are grieving, those who are homeless, and those who are searching for hope. Help us, Lord, as your church, to reach out beyond these walls that we might serve you and offer your hope and love to others. So let us pray as we were taught to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. Our scripture this morning is James uh, chapter 5, verses 7 through 11. Patience in suffering. Be patient, then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains? You too be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against each other, brothers, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Let us be in prayer. Creator, we have come together to hear your word, your word for us as your disciples, and your word for our inspiration and for our guidance and for our hope. Open our hearts, our minds, and our ears that we might indeed hear your word for us today. May the words of my mouth be truth and bring you glory. Amen. Have you ever been in a place where all you wanted to be is finished? You may have started out with enthusiasm, but after a while, all you could think of is, is will this ever end? I, I feel that way when I start reading. I think, oh, this is just going to take a couple of hours. And then three hours later, I look around, and there are still millions of weeds. Or, or fixing the gas tanks on a 75 International pickup. Thought it was going to be a short little job. It and the repairman were in the garage for weeks or that thousand-piece puzzle, which turned out to be a 999-piece puzzle. Or, or did you ever get up, and while you were getting ready for work, think, I wish I could just stay home today? I have, and guess what? My wish came true. So how are we doing at this stay-at-home stuff? 
We've been under our stay-at-home order for five weeks now and probably looking at at least two weeks before we even can anticipate an end. Uh, I haven't told you anything new, have I? Not yet, not yet. First, I want to remind you to be patient. Why is that so difficult? Because we can be selfish creatures. We want what we want and we want it now. Do I sound like a J.G. Wentworth commercial? There is a certain amount of patience we exhibit and do, at least with a little understanding, especially when we know the ending. Like, like a pregnancy. Nine months, the doctors say. Now, I, I'm talking like a woman. Being pregnant was easier in the first few months than the last trimester. Already experienced the anticipation of new life. And we know that this is going to be and we're not going to be ginormous for the rest of our lives. And we can get impatient still. So we eat the hottest chili we can, hoping to help things move along. Scripture reminds us that farmers have patience, waiting for the rains to come to water their crops, and they're dependent upon those grains. We need to practice patience in this current situation. Patience with our circumstances over which we have no control. Patience with the government over which we have very limited control. Patience with each other. And we do have more control over this. And especially, patience with yourself. And this we have complete control over. Forgive yourself if you lose your temper. Be willing to ask for forgiveness. And give everyone a second chance. Remember, this is not the first time God's children have had stay-at-home orders, and their survival depended upon them obeying those orders. I can give you a list. Passover. Stay in your house, and the shadow of death will pass over your home. The ark. Of course, there wasn't a lot of places to go, but it was a stay-at-home situation. Don't you think Noah's wife got, got tired of her family and the animals and the smell? And, and she didn't know when it was going to end. Many cities had walls around them for protection with a main gate. Joshua 6.1 describes Jericho as a walled city where no one went out or came in. In the New Testament, at the end of Luke, just before his ascension, Jesus told the disciples, stay in Jerusalem until they were clothed with power from on high. I list these examples as proof. We are not the only ones to endure stay-at-home orders. And if we look at these examples, there were blessings on the other side. My second point, perseverance is growth in faith. For this very reason, it make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. That's from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. This is a growing faith, and it is a process. Perseverance is steadfastness, continuing to do or achieve something despite difficulties, failure, and opposition. Perseverance is continuing to the end, finishing the race regardless of the terrain. George Lucas says it this way, you simply have to put one foot in front of the other and keep going. Put blinders on and plow right on ahead. 
trying a new thing like homeschooling? Listen to Mary Ann Tadmacher. Courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes it's the quiet voice at the end of the day whispering, I will try again tomorrow. Idioms surround us. Go for it. Stay the course. Hang in there. Stick with it. Don't give up. One foot in front of the other. So whether you're in this at-home stuff by yourself, with your pets, your spouse, your children, or your parents, don't give up. Remain steadfast in, in your purpose to see the other side. I'm not sure what you're worried about, finances, your job, your family, but this is an opportunity to turn to your faith, to find ways to, to reconnect with the church and to be the church to others, whether it's watching the online services or, or calling someone else to offer encouragement and hope. Let me reread the James passage. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. If you need a reminder, just read the first chapter and the last chapter in the book of Job. The James passage ends with, the Lord is full of compassion and mercy which leads to the third point. Perseverance leads to blessing. Each of the examples from the Bible had a blessing for those who persevered. Passover. The nation of Israel was born. Freedom from Egypt and life. The ark, a new world, a new normal, was created for God's people. Joshua, his job was to take Israel to, into the promised land, and he needed to conquer cities to gain control. He persevered with his army, and the walls came tumbling down, a major step in overtaking the land of Canaan. The disciples who stayed in Jerusalem at the instruction of Yeshua were blessed at Pentecost, the coming of Holy Spirit. I'm not sure what blessings we can expect. That's where our faith comes in. Maybe we will know our family better, or, or the dogs will know some new tricks, or we have started uh, to learn a new skill or language, or cooking new recipes. We may be wanting to get out, to get back to normal, thinking we just need to be outside to make a difference, to, to be, keep on making progress, and here we sit. Just because we don't see movement doesn't mean God isn't working. He might just be building our character through suffering and perseverance. We need to trust God and God's word. God is our provider, and we need to trust as we continue to bring our first fruits to God's church, even when we believe our finances are unstable. That requires faith and is the true mark of discipleship, living up to our vows even, even during this season of uncertainty. We are God's creation, and God has given us the ability to survive many things, and Scripture promises us we will not be tempted beyond what we can endure. Ephesians 3 tells us God made us to do immeasurably more than all we ask. We can persevere. The same spirit which raised Jesus from the dead is in us. We can persevere. We need to hold on to these promises, especially in these times. As Christians, this idea uh, of waiting and persevering to the end is not new. 
Much of the New Testament is about persevering in our faith so we can be ready for the second coming of Christ in the new Jerusalem. Remember Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. Let us hold on to the faith as we persevere together, growing in character and anticipating the future when we can be together as the body of Christ. We can do this. We will do this. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we may feel helpless and fearful during this season. Help us to turn to you when our circumstances seem to overcome us. Help us to hold on to your promises that we may persevere and be found faithful. Amen. In these uncertain times, may you walk in this world, in your world, however small it may be right now, but you walk with courage and persevere to the end through the strength of him who loves us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>